guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Secrets Apple Crunch. I was writing a blog and that really prompted me to turn it into a vlog. It's on the value of journaling. The blog became so somber and heavy that I was just like, anybody who reads this, no, it's definitely going to take that I have some deep childhood issues or like internal turmoil that I ain't dealt with. So I was like, no man, I'm going to turn this into a vlog. <laughs> but on a more serious note though, I thought it would be quite enriching for you to be able to have the more human encounter of the written work. And it would more so speak to the heart of what I'm saying. And so I'm going to read the blog and then have a conversation with you about the five reasons why I think that journaling is an incredibly important practice to inculcate into your life. New dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Ooh, 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 ooh. There are places like this everywhere. Places that we enter as young girls from which we never return. Growing up, my two older sisters gave me the confidence to be. I would simply let myself be either of the two, depending on the day. Though they had lives of their own, it really mattered to me that they invited me in. Even at the end, just so we could laugh, huddle together, in a shared world that made me really feel that I belonged. If they shut me out on account of age, I mildly hid or looked away, pretending that I did not mind this exclusion. Whenever grown up spoke, I often forgot to disappear or to whisper. It took me some time to understand that my mother's home was not a democracy, that my words were only welcomed upon invitation, particularly when we had guests. My late father, his supreme goal was to have his children attend the best of schools. And so at the tender age of six, I moved to hostel, a city away from home. It was 1996, the year the South African Schools Act was legislated. This is the act that repealed all discriminatory legislation, allowing for children of color to enter formerly closed schools. And so we were registered. We had dorm rooms allocated to us. Umama dropped me off with my suitcase, which had all my necessities, toiletries, a towel, new toothbrush. We learned how to make our own beds here at the age of six. We learned how to jump off from our bunk beds onto the ground without breaking our legs. That's a skill. We were raised here in our uniforms. We were trained through break bells and saying grace. We were rewarded with tap goodies, regulated through prep and bedtimes. On some nights, we would hang our heads at the end of our bunk beds with hands on our cheeks, chatting way past lights out, chuckling. At the end of the term, it was time to go home. <laughs> I remember this vividly. I had my suitcase in hand, waiting, eagerly anticipating Mama's arrival. I saw her from a distance, a woman gowned in black clothing, a symbol of mourning. I'm thrilled. I sprang towards the gate, bolting towards her, hands open, ready to embrace her. As I get closer, I'm disappointed that the image of my mother begins to blur increasingly becoming unfamiliar. I realize it is not her yet. So <laughs> instead I let my arms fall on either side and I pretend to be taking a light jog intending to take a U-turn by the entrance. I numb myself. I numb the rising perception that wants to remind me that she's forgotten about me. She's not coming for me. Continued to say, She's not coming for you. She has forgotten you. You're not loved. This thing in me. I don't remember when this acacia of rejection began to thorn its edges into my soul, but I remember this feeling arising once more on every single birthday on the 5th of January. The night before my birthday, I would ask my dad in prayer to show up to me in a dream. I would plead with my father to appear to me in a dream. This is the only present I sought from him, a conversation. I thought it was the least he could do to make up for the distance he permitted between me and him through death. This yearly request began as a plea, but in my later years, it became a mere offering to him. Just one more chance to give him so that he would just show up, at least. There are places like this everywhere Places you enter as a young girl from which you never return. 
In primary and at the start of secondary school, this deep desire to belong persisted. I remember chuckling at jokes that I really did not find funny, flapping sheets of sound so I would stay within. I'd feel the tiny little gaps poking at me, ready to expose my fake laughter. I shrill, remembering this feeling of being an outsider. Those around me seemed so certain at the time, so clear. It seemed something was shaky with me. Once, a girl sat in my seat during bass class. I did not know what to say, so instead I moved to the back and the next day after being hyped by a friend, I mustered the courage to utter the words, <laughs> that, that's my chair. She washed away into another chair without resistance and I wondered then and I at times even wonder now, what had made me so afraid to speak? It's as though I believed that communicating honestly would lend me in the fault lines of friendship. My greatest gift is being a thinker, a deep one at that, and being a teacher. But as a child, this excessive philosophizing and having insight into things and trying to teach them to my friends on the way to the bus stop was often awkward, to say the least. So I'd cut my words short and reduce the meaning of what I was trying to say, quickly appearing to be silly or perhaps absent-minded. I think at times I may have believed it was true. In the biting and the hiding, I learned how to be, how to conceal what was not acceptable, how to be socially correct, how to make friends and to keep them, how to disappear. In my teens, though, God's word quickened these places in me, these pits, these shadows. This becoming, however, is a continued process, I won't lie. I at times feel a fear in my stomach or a textured guilt that makes its home in my spirit, demanding me and my time, asking me to sit down and to really dig and give an account of the roots that seek to bloom in me, the ancient part. And I found blogging, did I say blogging again? So I found for myself that journaling is an incredibly important practice for this process of becoming, right? And, and so the reason I shared all of that is in the hopes that it would make you start thinking about your own ancient parts. And so those small little shares for me remind me of the ways in which new I dawn, almost came new into new the world, right? It's a new life for me. What I really ooh, did in the story ooh, was to kind of open up to you, I'm become a lot more vulnerable about moments life. in my own life where pathways were created, be it a sense of rejection or not being loved or, or what, whichever one. And I think people have different ones and some people struggle with trust or doubt or uncertainty or fear, right? And I don't think that those kinds of habits of thinking are born in the blood, but they built over time and they become ways of thinking and ways of seeing the world and ways of interacting with others. And I think those have energy and they carry an energy with them and they affect us one way or the other, right? And so my hope was that in discussing or talking about journaling, that I would have really done the groundwork with you and allowed you to think a lot deeper about who you are and how you've become. Journaling is really great for stock taking. And so at the end of the day, good or bad, being able to say, what was my experience in the world today? And how am I making meaning of this experience, right? And how am I constructing meaning out of it, right? Um, secondly, I think journaling enables you to work through your thoughts. And so that means detangling the thoughts, being like, this is what I think. Why do I think this? And then being able to identify the seeds in your thoughts and the patterns in your thoughts, allowing them to surface. And being able to do that, I think, what it does or letting those thoughts simmer creates understanding in your own world which is really good for understanding others and meditating. So three, I think journaling allows you to be a lot more self-reliant. I think there are moments in your life where, the, where it's not yet time yet to share your story or your vision, be it with your friends, even your most trusted friends, right? Like, and it's very easy. I think there's great temptation to always speak about what you're thinking, feeling, seeing, da -da, da -da, whatever. But I think there are moments when it is not yet time to share your vision or story, right? And it becomes important to do the digging, the groundwork, and really building intimacy with yourself, right? Um, which I think builds an integrity of the soul, but I'll discuss that a little bit later. Four, I think journaling allows you to protect others that you're in relationship with. 
So I think at times you can be in conflict with a friend or someone who's really close to you. And there is a temptation to go and to seek counsel from a third party. But I think a lot of the time there's no opportunity then to come and clear that out. And so I think having time to journal is almost having time to speak to yourself and to understand what is going on without tainting the reputation of another person to another, right? Um, five, I think journaling is a very great way to store your vision and your goals and your ideas and to write them down because I think that those are God's vision for our lives and being able to write them and make them tangible to ourselves is so important okay <laughs> and then I think consistent journaling promotes intentionality right it, I think that's a fruit of journaling because if you take the time to sit and really ask yourself questions like, how did I live that out? Am I proud of the way that that turned out? Could I have done it better? That kind of clarity of mind, the next time you are faced with a similar situation or confronted with a similar challenge, you've thought about how you actually want to behave or you want to be in that kind of position, right? Um, and then seven, for myself, I found that journaling is such an incredible way for, to remind myself of God's faithfulness in my life and the plans that he has long written for me. So when I see the things that I wrote down years ago happening, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, it reminds, it, it makes me feel like this is, this is no joke, right? Like these things that you think and dream, like they are part of a much bigger plan than what you would be able to create out of your own strength. And then eight, I think journaling is like a memory box in your own words. <laughs> it offers you the opportunity to laugh at yourself. There's so many silly things that you write in that thing. And it, reading them much later makes you see how you could have been so anxious about small things when you were younger that you really didn't need to be because they were always going to work out, right? Um, yeah, and nine, I think if for no other reason, I think journaling is a good writing practice. Um, yeah, so that's run about it. <sighs> I feel like I just like <laughs> I just did a lot of sharing, okay? Um yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I'd really love to have um an interaction I guess from this video, particularly because it's so personal. <laughs> um yeah, I I like creating content and being able to do this and so if you were to I'm inviting you I guess into this world of content creating and content sharing and that we create some kind of relationship and love and, you know, yeah. So thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.